Hi everyone, it's Evi Martinson here. In this video, I'm gonna go through some development processes in wildlife photography. So, some of it will be repetition for you, but there are some new elements too. So we are, have one picture here of a motmot -mot in the rainforest of Panama. And uh, as you see, a raw file lacks contrast and color and sharpness so we have to develop it so we're going to start with that right now and we're going to start with the clarity I'm going to drag it up to 25 I'm going to increase the vibrance go up to 45 normally use that there we go and I see I can warm up the color temperature a little bit. So I just drag this slider here. Go to the right, a little warmer. There we go. And I'm going to add a little bit saturation. And then the contrast. And lift shadows a little bit up. Like this. I'm gonna go down and sharpening to 58. 1.1. 1 .1. And masking. I press the option button on the keyboard and drag the slider. The dark areas will not be sharpened. And I see here I used ISO 1600, so I will, you can see here it's some um, noise here, some grains. I can reduce that by using the noise reduction. I drag it up to, you see here, it's, it's getting less, no more than 20. I think we are there, because if we go further, the image will be soft. And not so sharp and I'm gonna enable the um, the profile corrections and the chromatic aberration and I want to add a little bit of vignetting to darken the area at the edges there now we are already in a better place and I'm gonna lift the exposure a little bit up like that and I will also go in and adjust the bird a little bit by the first thing I'm going to do is to use the brush tool it's up here the brush then I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit, 0 0.11, a little bit on the contrast, a little bit up on the shadows, a little bit lighter, a little bit on the clarity, and a bit, little bit sharpening, not much there. So we're going to go out here on the bird, and I'm going to paint over it, and we we'll see it. It's a little bit better now, a little bit on the B, down there, so now I can pre-adjust or do this adjustment here. You see here, this is the area I worked on, so this is of course too much, I will just fine-tune it up there, good. Now you see I used a flash here with a flash beamer and you see the reflection in the eye. And one very good thing about the, the new versions of Adobe Lightroom is that I have this pet eye removal. So I can go in here, click on pet eye. This is the red eye correction. But I go to the pet eye, I go out, you see this cross. Just click right in the center of the eye. And you see, 
that reflection is now gone. And if you click, if you check this one, add catch light, you get this catch light in the dark area there. So you can also adjust the position and the size by dragging in this one. If you want more or less. So we're going to close it now. Look, the ref reflection from the flash is gone. Looks more natural. And we still have a, some things to do on the color. So we're going to go down here to the HSL tool. Here, I'm going to start with the luminance and I will lift the orange a little bit up. Look here. Not much, but lift it up. And also, yeah, I think that's it. Then I go to the saturation. Also, lift the orange a little bit up. There. And now I can also take the green a little bit down. Let's see what happens then. Let me down on the green. You see the birds is better. This was this was original. I darken the green and the bird pops out a little bit better. I'm gonna fine tune the exposure a little bit more. Lift it a little bit up. And now I'm gonna use the brush one more time. And I want to darken the background a little bit. So we'll go not so much 0 0.15. And I zero out all these others by double clicking on them. I increase the brush size. I'm going to paint over the background and darken it a little bit. So, more adjustment down there. And then we can lift this one. I can just open that old one by clicking on the ring. And I can lift it, lift it up there. And I want to add a new one. I want to darken that branch behind here. So I click here on new and I adjust the size. And I'm going to drag it just over here. Then I'm going to darken it a little bit here. Now it's better. And the last thing, I will remove some dust. So I click up here, I start here. Go to the spot removal tool. And I click here. I can uh, adjust the size here by scrolling on the mouse or using the slider here. Click over the dust. And here in the navigator window, I can move through the image and then remove the dust. Do a quick travel through the image. Here, there, so I think uh, we did it. And if I want to see the whole picture, I can press the F, F on keyboard and get a full screen. And F one more time, go back. If I want to see it in this size, I can press 
L button two times. One more time and back. And uh, now we have a much better image. And it's something we can use. In this image I used ISO 1600. I used my 600 millimeter with the two times extender, so I have a 1200 millimeter. At f8, I used a tripod, and I used a flash with the flash beamer, and at 180th of a second, and I used a tripod and a cable release to avoid shaking. So it's not so bad image. I'm gonna jump to the next one. And here's a muskox at Dovre in Norway. And right away I can see I need to warm up the color temperature. So I go right to the color temperature and drag it a little bit to the right. Then we're going to increase the contrast, the general contrast, go up to 25. And I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit. Look here, the shadows, I lift them up, get more details on the animal. Increase the clarity to 25, my vibrance up to 45. So we are already in a better place. A little bit up on the saturation. Look here, now we have the beautiful autumn colors we had up there. So we're gonna do some uh, sharpening. So we're gonna do to 58, 1 1.1, and do the masking. Press the Option button or the Alt button on the Windows computers, and click on the slider, and the dark areas will not be sharpened. And here I used ISO 1000, so I have a little bit uh, grainy, little bit grains. So I'm going to use the noise reduction, but not so much, up to 10. And I will enable the profile corrections. But I want the vignette a little thin. A little bit in, and then the midpoint here. Not so much. And now I see I can work more on the contrast on the muskox. So I'm gonna go to the brush tool and I want to lift the exposure a little bit up and I want to increase the contrast and I want a little bit more clarity. So I adjust the brush to start painting. It's an amazing tool. We can work on the details like this, and we can adjust more, a little bit up. Here we go. See a little bit more contrast. Yes, a little bit up on the highlights. See now, more better contrast. Oh yes. So, I think we are there. There are many ways to develop an image. There are no truths, but here I am close to what I saw with my eye out in the field. And this is maybe how the old Fujichrome Velvia slide film would have looked. Let's jump to the next. Oh yes, a white Ibis and in um, Panama. So, here we're gonna start with uh, the um, contrast. General contrast. I'm gonna warm up the color temperature a little bit to the right. You see here, this is too much, this is too much the other way. If I double click, I go back to start and I slide it a little bit to the right. And I will increase the clarity and the vibrance. Already now we have a better image. Lift it up on saturation. Look here. 
Amazing Bird. So I'm gonna adjust the sharpness up to 58, 1.1, 1. 1. and do the masking, press the Option or Alt button on the keyboard and drag the slider. The dark, dark areas will not be sharpened. And here I want to crop the image a little bit, just to have another balance. So take it down a little bit here, and there we can do something like that. Yes. Don't crop it too much, because then you can't print it uh, in a large format. And uh, you see here, I used a 1200 millimeter lens. It's the 600 millimeter with the two times extender. I used ISO 800. I used the uh, aperture f8 and at one two thousand of a second. Very fast shutter speed. And I use a tripod here. So this is in uh, Panama and uh, a white Ibis. And here I spot metered the light here in this light area. So in manual mode. So I exposed for the highlights and everything else fell in place. And learn to do the spot metering in manual mode. Then you get better images. Another option is to work in aperture mode, for example in evaluating priority, and then you can just underexpose, for example in minus 2 exposure in a situation like this, and you will end up very close to what you see here. That's another quick option if you are working in aperture priority and uh, evaluating light metering. You can just underexpose and then everything else will fall into place when you do that. So, I think we are there. I'm gonna go to the next. Oh yes, also in Panama in the rainforest and uh, a beautiful butterfly. I'm gonna start with a little bit cropping, not much. I'm going to take it in, a little bit in. And you see here, the lock is on. Then when I move one of the sides, the other follows. So I keep the proportions. I think there, not more. Yes, it's stronger and better. Sometimes when we are working on wildlife, we have to work fast and we don't always have, have so much time to fine tune the composition as we have in uh, landscape photography. So we have to work, work quicker in um, wildlife photography. So we're going to increase the clarity to 25, we're going to increase the vibrance to 45, a little bit on the saturation. And we are already in a better place. The contrast goes up. And we're gonna do a little bit of adjustment on the color temperature. Let's see, a little bit to the right. There. To the right is warmer tones, and to the left is cooler tones. Sometimes I also have to adjust the tint, but very rarely. So if you go to the right, you get more red, to the left, more green. Sometimes uh, you have to fine tune it if you have too much red or too much green. You can fine tune that one. But normally I don't touch it. Go down to sharpening. I'm gonna go up to 58, one. Do the masking, press the option or alt button. Dark areas will not be sharpened. And here, you see here I used the, the macro flash. 
I used the ISO 400 180 mm lens at f16. Give me, gives me a little bit more depth of field. Can be good to have when you're working on insects and small creatures. Because with the macro lens you have only a few millimeters of depth of field. And uh, the settings was 1250 second in manual mode. So we're going to do the profile correction. But I want to take in the vignette here a little bit in. So it darkens the edges of the frame and I keep the viewer inside. And now I can go to the HSL menu and fine tune the color. Here, HSL, U, Saturation, Luminance. I want to lift the orange a little bit up. And you see here, this is too much, too little. So just lift it up to give it a better contrast. Not to change the color, but for the contrast. And also a little bit here on this color. It has a mix of uh, green and aqua. And I have green and aqua here. But I want to go directly into that color and fine tune that. I think it has a mix of green and aqua. Let's see. I go to this button here. I click on that, and I go into the color, and I click on the color, and I scroll on the mouse. Now it was green and yellow, that combination. Looks like agua. There we go. Leap it up. Go back and click here again, and put it back. We go to the saturation, then we can lift the saturation on orange, lift it up, and lift it on the yellow, and then lift it on the green. There. Very good. If I want to fine tune more, I can go in with the brush. Let's say I want to lift the light here on the head. I go to the brush tool and take down the contrast and clarity. And now we have only exposure 0.2. I go over here and I paint over here and lift uh, the, the eye here in the background. There we go. I can fine tune it here a little bit more up there. Now it's more balanced with the rest of the butterfly. Look here. I press the L button two times on the keyboard. And we have a good picture. So the L button darkens the area around. If I want to see it in full screen, I press the F button. And we have a bigger version. Nice colors. So, thank you for being with me in this video. A uh, little bit more about Adobe Lightroom, and I'll see you soon in the next.